Moving to item number 13. Request by Sheriff Blackburn to purchase two additional patrol vehicles for the Lano County Sheriff's Office. And I don't have any material on that. This is Mr. Wilson. Do you need to speak to Yeah, I need to speak to Yes, I still think that we need to uh, give the sheriff the two vehicles that, he, that he's asked for. He originally asked for five. As everybody knows, we gave him one. Uh, we appropriated money for two more, but we're not giving them to him. So I think we need to give him these vehicles. As I said before, we have vehicles out there that, that officers are driving that are uh, 180, 190,000 miles on. And when we talk about liability to the county, I think that is a great liability to the county. So, if there's no more discussion, I would make a motion. Sure, sure. I wouldn't mind saying thing or two. Sure. Sheriff, sure. sure. whatever, and John, you know, last time we talked about, we can't talk about these other things that are not on the agenda, but we talked about other uh, things to buy for the sheriff's department or, or county-wide uh, systems, the cop, the cop scene. Mm -hmm. But whether it's that one or another one, would you, uh, would you want to not buy, maybe save some of this to possibly go toward that? You know, last time, one of my problems was the money. Um, we kind of went over, well, we got 20 or 30, 20,000 here. Or I think one of y'all said, maybe you said, yeah, 20,000, you could go on something else. Well, if we go to buy one of these programs eventually, um, you know, that, that's uh, a $70,000 that goes a long way toward us. Right. I, I agree with you on the uh, I mean, yeah, correct me if, you're, if you disagree with what I've got to say, but um, I believe that the vehicles themselves are the most important, simply important. because uh, we're driving vehicles out there that I believe are unsafe. And I also agree with you that spending this money on whether it be cop saying or some sort of CAD or MDC system uh, for the vehicles is probably should go through the budget process. Uh, I certainly do agree with you on that. So I've been researching into other systems other than the same thing. And uh, I really believe that uh, we need to take a closer look at that and look at it through a budgetary process. And, and I would add that uh, I agree with John. We're, we're going to be needing a new CAD system. And I think that, I'm sorry, what is a uh, computer aided okay. uh, Ours is how old is well, we got a 2009 from Capcom, uh, and it's the company that we got that uh, CAD system from is called Carries. They no longer exist, therefore, well, our CAD system. I'm going to get off on that too far. Right, okay. But yeah. anyway, I have to agree with you that, that maybe the, the large expenditures for the uh, <coughs> some sort of in car or mobile data <coughs> system would, would probably be better served than the budgetary item. I just think the priority now is the vehicle because of the mileage we have on the vehicle. Uh, we can approach <coughs> next year with the budget next year as far as the cap system goes and MD2. And uh, it's all one system. Sheriff, I can barely hear you. I can't hear very good. Oh, I'm sorry. I said, and, and I think we can approach <coughs> the budget next year to plan ahead for this CAD system we're going to have to replace. And it, it includes MD2, includes the UPS, all that. But I think, the, I think the cars are a priority. They always have been. So we have other cars that have 140, close to 150,000 miles on them. We're not even talking about new places right now. Whenever um, you talk about budget stuff, when, how many vehicles do you think in the next year that you have to have? Not counting these two. Just to catch up, uh, to, if the cutoff is, stays at 150,000 miles, I would say by next year we'll have at least four that will have over 150,000 miles. Maybe not, five. Not counting these two. Not counting these two. Not counting these two. Yes, sir. No, not counting these You know, I, I, and I didn't get it from the auditor either, but I'd ask for a rundown on all the vehicles. Because, you know, we do the same with Road and Bridge. We got to, I mean, at some point you got to replace them. We talked about this a lot, but. Once again, when it comes to figuring out your budget, and I know y'all are in the budget workshops and you're here also, but it's kind of tough to sign off on spending that 100000 if you don't absolutely need to, or, or 160000 however many vehicles they, you know, whatever they cost. 
True, but uh, I'd like to see a plan. And we kind of we used to do that. We were getting behind the road bridge also, but on these vehicles, which is why I asked for that. What vehicles? How many miles? The maintenance reports. The the uh, just whatever anything that goes wrong with it. Because if we're gonna to replace these vehicles, I, it'd feel better in my mind if we had it. We had a plan on this one. We know we got to replace this one next year. You need this kind of vehicle for this officer or for this position or whatever. You know, rather than let's just buy a couple vehicles because we've got some miles on them. And I, I don't mean that the way it sounds, but uh, if vehicles are and, and who's driving them, it don't make that much difference to me. But you did say that that, that you're replacing those vehicles and send the new ones move them out move so the other ones to where well, you said move to. well like the, like the vehicle we use the jail to transport say from here to Barney or from here to Blanco or from mm -hmm. here to the court system yes sir those vehicles they are the kind of the bottom of the yeah. yeah. I think he's talking about the uh, Blue's car and, and Dan's car being that they are oh, yeah. primarily yeah. transport vehicles mm -hmm. uh, and I, I get that you would probably put the new ones into the patrol and move some of the patrol, right. shuffle them around a little bit, but I don't know if we're going to table this or go on, but I'd like to see a, a, a plan. Not trying to step on your toes and tell you what to do with your job, but when it comes, it is our job to budget for whatever in your department and in every, every department. So. But just, you know, we have come before the commission. Oh no, I, I know we're that. asking for five cars. Oh yes, sir, I know that. Again, I know three. Every year you, you get cut back. I mean, every, everybody usually does. I mean, there's a little bit of difference, but all not everyone doesn't get what they want. You know that. Oh, I know that. Yes, yeah, so just one one more point I'd like to make is that uh, we have these high mileage vehicles that when they do go to auction, they get sold. We're getting eight hundred, nine hundred dollars for for these cars, but then again, we're just putting a twenty-five hundred dollar transmission in them just to keep them on the road. And an eight hundred thousand dollar car, no, no, no. and that's what I mean. Whether uh, whose whether whose job it is or whatever, but I mean, it is one of our jobs to budget for equipment, uh, uh, salaries, whatever. Uh, I'd like to see when you, when you got. 40 cars, however many you got in your fleet. I don't know how many there are. 34. 34. 34. Okay, there's 32 or so that are, are patrol, is that right, or 31? No, no, no. A lot of those are investigator vehicles. That well, that's what I mean. I mean, that, that are drove, driven every day. They're not sitting here at the jail. Right. You know, I'd like to, I don't know, what, not a rotation, but whatever it's called, or where those vehicles are. Uh, well, we know what we got a budget for next year. We know what we're going to have to budget for the year after. The jail cars, they're signed to the jail for jailers to transport inmates to back and forth to court. Do not have typical police equipment on. They are mm -hmm. uh, repurposed from old patrol vehicles to the jail. And so a lot of the equipment, like radars and, and uh, yeah. in-car cameras and stuff like that, are taken out of those cars. So they're not, you, you can't. Reuse those as a patrol vehicle. And obviously, they're they're at the jail because mm -hmm. they're not worthy for patrol. You don't want to get in pursuit of someone driving around. I got you. It's my dog. Right. I'd like to comment. Um, just to make it clear, we just had a presentation regarding the sheriff's authority, and the sheriff certainly does have authority as an elected official to run his operation and to manage his budget as the budget has been uh, placed in the department for the sheriff's office. Um, that has, that is under the sheriff's control. The sheriff does have one vehicle in that sheriff's budget that has been approved for him to purchase and that's already taken care of. What we're talking about here is two vehicles in addition to what is currently in the sheriff's budget. These two vehicles have been budgeted in what we call non-departmental, so it is not in the sheriff's budget nor under the sheriff's authority, 
at this point in time in regards to the funding or financials for any additional purchases. So it's a decision by the Commissioner's Court to say, in addition to what is already in the Sheriff's budget, this is an additional request that is, is up for consideration for the Commissioners to decide. Um, and so, and so that's, that's why we're having, you know, kind of this issue. Well, I'd like to interject Sure, go ahead. Yeah. Is that we asked for five vehicles. Right. We said we might get three and we were budgeted one. Right. And uh, the thing about it, the reason I'm asking for that two additional vehicles is because the buy board fee is $400 for a vehicle. If you order them separately, it's charged for each vehicle, the $400 buy board fee. If you order them all at once, it saves the county $800 by getting those okay. three vehicles under one buy board contract. Well, that's why I ask for them so that if I do get them, at least I can save the county $800. Okay. I think that's, that's smart. Uh, I just wanted to make clear that this is not taking any authority away from what is already in the sheriff's budget in regards to this issue of two vehicles. The sheriff can run his budget as he sees fit because that's already been approved by the commissioner's court. These two are outside of that, that budget at this point in time. Um, and I, I guess that I, carrying on with what Commissioner Moss said, I think that this, these two, I think we don't have any information in front of us. We do only have a line item that is stated here. So we don't have a list of current vehicles. We don't know, have a list of what the mileage is on those vehicles. We don't know what, I think you'd said last time you'd requested The mileage was given to the court. It was, and, and I think what you'd said is that one is a jailer's vehicle that we're going to replace and the other one was another vehicle that's used for transportation that we're going to replace um, and I guess my question is why would be why why we put giving a brand new vehicle <coughs> to a jailer or to transportation when there's a need for our for our officers out there to have better equipment well or are you going to switch things around that determination is I'm for. okay this, uh, those vehicles, the, the two transport people, may not get the brand new vehicles. Okay. They may get a vehicle that has 100,000 miles on it, and then the, the brand new vehicle would go to patrol where they have a, uh, a higher risk of, or a higher, higher probability of uh, pursuit driving and, and things like that. Right. So uh, that's a determination that would probably be made at a later time just trying to figure out exactly where these cars are going to land once they are, if they are approved for purchase. Okay. Okay, so you, right now you don't know where they're going to go. You just, it's, it's we just space. know that we have two vehicles that have 180,000 miles plus on them that are just not sufficient to, to drive right now. Okay. We're, we're going we're gonna to allow the, the new vehicles go to where they have the most hazardous use right. because they are new vehicles and because and we're going to try to replace our worst cars. Okay. okay the other point I'd like to talk about we had a long discussion presentation regarding the vehicle use policy that is not on our agenda to talk about but it does have an impact on this decision. Um, I did receive from Constable Olfers an email of a vehicle use policy that the sheriff's office appears to have put together effective March 1 uh, of this year. So yeah. it's not yet. It's revised, I guess. Revised March 1st. We've had a policy in place since September 9th of 2009. Okay. Now, we've, we've been talking about the vehicle use policy for a few months. And this is the first time I've heard and seen any vehicle use policy presented in the sheriff's office uh, which is a surprise to me since we uh, have been talking about it and then never once was it brought up that you didn't have one. It was uh, never asked, that was never asked by any commissioner. Well I would think that in the discussions and workshop that would have been proposed. We're getting off the agenda. I know. Yeah. Anyway I think the vehicle use policy that you that I've now read the one that you have are revising effective March 1st 
Uh, and I don't know how that compares to a previous one, because I don't have one. It uh, has a number of things in there which uh, basically we, we uh, feel were necessary in the vehicle use policy that was put together by the Commissioner's Court. Um, I'm not sure yet whether our, our, our county attorney has reviewed that to determine whether county liability is covered in the vehicle use policy or not which is part of the reason we have that policy and part of the reason as, we, as it relates to county assets, vehicles, how that applies. Has that been reviewed with the county attorney? No, sir. No? No. Okay. Um, anyway, those are kind of outstanding issues, I think, that we still need to uh, finalize. Uh, and from my point of view, I think we need to provide vehicles. We need to provide vehicles that have the support of a, of a, a sheriff's uh, vehicle use policy that is, a, that is approved in consultation with our county attorney uh, so that any liabilities that we have are covered. Um, so I, I'm not, I don't think we've got this issue finalized yet, but I think we're moving Commissioner Jones, if I may offer, <clears throat> the sheriff can have a policy, <clears throat> I really sure wants to have a policy, I'll be happy to review it with him and give him some ideas, sure. but I can't usurp whatever policy he puts in place. I can right. just give him advice and, right. and counsel. Yeah, we, would enjoy, we would enjoy so. that advice. <clears throat> that's, I, I think that's fine. <clears throat> I think as a, count, as a responsibility here at Commissioner's Court, we have a responsibility to the county to make sure our liability uh, is is protected and the taxpayer's liability is protected uh, under whatever decisions we make and policies we have in place. So if we're in court and a lawyer says, do you have a policy? We better make sure that policy does cover whatever liability we potentially may, may be facing. And we're uh, so working together on that would be would be great to be able to work it out. I agree. Okay. I just have a couple things that I want to uh, address. Number one, I do I do want to apologize to the sheriff's office for asking in the last meeting who the driver was going to be on those vehicles. It was inappropriate. Uh, I think the proper question should have been which vehicles were going to be removed from the inventory. So anyway, I just want to apologize for that because that was not proper. Uh, I think the bottom line of this whole discussion about these vehicles is that we are, uh, we seem to be accepting a premise that 34 vehicles is the number that's required by the Sheriff's Office. And I guess I, my opinion is that the commissioners need to have a discussion about whether that is the appropriate number. Um, because of the vehicles that, and I have looked at the vehicle list, there are only three vehicles with over 150,000 miles on them. One of them we have already uh, given money to replace and it has not been replaced. The two remaining are, are the two that are at issue. So of the rest of the vehicles, the other 31 have under 150,000 miles. Of those, 23 have mileage under 125,000 miles. And of those, uh, 11 have mileage under 75,000 miles. Now the sheriff has told us on several occasions that he has at the most five deputies on any given, at any given time that are on duty. So my question would be, why we need this number of vehicles, and I think it's something we just need to ascertain. Now, it's certainly the sheriff's prerogative to give everyone a vehicle to drive home, but if they shared the vehicles that had under 120 or under 50,000 miles for uh, the ones that are doing the patrolling, it seems to me we could save a lot of money by diminishing the number of vehicles in that office. Now we cannot remove them from his inventory, but I think that he could remove them when he sees that they're not fit to drive. May I comment on that please? If, if you share cars that way, you're going to double or triple the miles that you put on those cars every month. I understand that, but if you're only, if we're only providing 
15 or 17 cars instead of 34, we would save on insurance, we would save on vehicle maintenance, we would save on fuel, oil, and flats, maybe not fuel to the same degree. We would save on tires, and <coughs> just looking at the insurance cost and all those costs, we could save probably about $125,000 a year if we cut down the number. We are always being told how we need, we need to increase wages. My preference would be give people more money in their pocket to take home and not so many vehicles for people to take home. That's up to the sheriff's office, but that would be my suggestion. So I just think it's a conversation we need to have before we start accepting the premise that we've got to keep the 34 vehicles intact, and when one of those 34 gets over 150,000 miles, we've got to replace it. I, that's just a thought. But I think looking at the big picture, it's a thought worth discussing. So that's just my two cents. Can I make a motion? Yes. Uh, I would move to uh, purchase two additional truck vehicles for the Lano County Sheriff's Office. Okay, I have a motion. Do we have a second? They're being, they're not being a second. I believe that means the motion fails. I would like to, and I'd be glad to meet with y'all. Just like I said, and look at a plan for the future where we don't just, well, we think we need to, we think, not that I'm necessarily questioning your judgment, but it is our job when it comes to budget items. And, and I know you're aware of that. And if anyone's not, it is the commission's fourth job the budget for every office. So I would like to work with y'all, as I do with Richard on Road Bridge, to, uh, on, a, on a plan that we're, we're gonna have to replace these vehicles unless something major goes wrong with another one every year. Well, I, I understand your, uh, you know, your duties as, as a commissioner, but my my position as sheriff is to provide a call to law enforcement for decisions in Lano County, and I think I need the car. Well, on this decision, I mean, it's not, it hasn't been secondly to load it on. I don't think this, this is a dead issue. This is still an issue that we still need to have some loose ends on this thing that needs to be worked out uh, prior to the final vote on, on providing these vehicles. The judge has brought up an issue. I brought up an issue regarding, you know, the, the sheriff's vehicle use policy that I think we'd like to move forward and finalize. And then also uh, the uh, you know the manner in which there is a plan for replacement, so we can properly budget year by year what that replacement plan is. So all those are kind of loose ends right now. It appears uh, on this issue. I don't think this is going to be off the agenda permanently. I think it's a, a delay until we work it out. Well, I don't know. I'd like to address one issue uh, on the judging plan of, of, of rotating cars. When you share cars, <clears throat> the maintenance is not as good as it should be. The care of the vehicle is not as good as it should be. When one person gets in that car, we have a lot of equipment. It's personal equipment. It's uh, long guns, it's flashlights, it's uh, uh, paperwork, it's uh, emergency equipment. It's whatever a person carries in, in a vehicle that they live in 12 hours a day. And you're gonna have less care of the vehicle because somebody else is driving it. Because people that, that, that work in their car, live in their car 12 hours a day, take care of that car. And uh, to say the least, right now we're putting about 20, 25,000 miles a year on them. You're gonna be putting about Fifty to sixty thousand dollars a year, a uh, year on if you drive twenty four seven, and uh, I just think that that is not the aspect to change. Uh, the people who live here in the county, they go ten eight when they leave their house. Uh, they are on duty, and uh, in the event of an emergency, we call everybody out, 
and you're going to have people that don't have cars that's going to have to come somewhere and get one, and there may or not, may not be one available. I'm just saying I think the the 24/7 use of a single vehicle by more than one party is not a good solution, and that that's my take to share. And I think most officers would verify that. Okay, I think there's some next steps on this that need to take place. Uh, we need a workshop on this, and we need to get it done. Okay, do we have a second? Oh, we didn't have a second. We didn't. So the motion failed. Okay. Moving to item number 14.